Hey guys, Rexland here. Wintry Shackles is releasing today, so this video will be talking about the new S Lightning character, Crimson Weave Alpha, and how to play her. I'll do my best to simplify her kit as much as possible so you guys can understand better, so let's get straight into it. Crimson Weave's banner will be available today, February 23rd, on both Theme and Fade banner, so make sure to pick the desired one. Her signature weapon Night Blaze and her cup will also be available alongside her. Now let's take a look at her kit. I won't go through the skill tooltips word for word here because it's better to just show it to you in my own words, so let's jump straight into the training grounds. Okay guys, Crimson Weave with a 5 star weapon and 4 signature memory and 2 Cotty. Now, she has a lot to unpack, her kit is massive, so I'll do my best to summarize it for you guys, starting with her UI over here. So this zero refers to her lightless points, the long gauge itself is her blade aura. These two are independent, and she only has blue orbs in her first form, her short sword, Kodachi. And her long sword, Odachi, will only be activated on her ultimate. So let's start with a basic attack chain, like this. Basic attack spam. And finish. However, if you pause a bit on this sequence over here, there is a red flash. What is that red flash? Let's find out. I'll pause and then press basic. Sword waves! Her favorite attack. That's right. She also gets the red flash prompt on dodging like this. So you can sword wave as much as you want. Just dodge and attack. Sword wave. So, we see that Sword Wave gives her Lightless Points, that's one source of it. Another source is by Pinging Orb, so I'll show you 3 Ping for Blue Orb. So it gave her 40 points and also half of Blade Aura. Blue Orb can also be chained into a combo, does slightly more damage. Now we have a full Blade Aura gauge. What does Blade Aura do? Simply press and hold dodge and she will go into a charging phase, like this, and release. So that was the full charge dash attack. Different amount of charge results in different dash. As you can see, full charge, small charge, half charge, max charge. So only the max charge gives iframe and also energy. The first two charges don't have iframe, something to take note. So let me reset the fight again to an empty gauge. Okay, so far we've learned that lightless points can be gained by doing full charge or sword wave or by pinging orbs and then blade aura also from pinging orbs or doing the charge or dash. That's all you need to know for Kodachi, a short sword. Now let's move on to her long sword, Odachi, pressing ultimate. Now, as you can see, all the blue orbs are now hidden, replaced with red and yellow orbs. Any blue orb generated during this time will be converted to either red or yellow. She still functions mostly the same, basic attack, and then there's also the red flash during basic attack for sword wave, dash and sword wave, and also red orbs and yellow orb pings will fill up her blade aura, like this. The only difference now is that when she does 3 ping, there's also a follow up attack, so I just did red orb, now I press basic attack. So that's the red orb 3 ping follow up. Red orb follow up. And this is yellow orb follow up. Yellow. Press basic. Really cool post attack animation. Now remember we had the red number before? That's the moon and stance. This is what it's for. When, it, when it's red after doing a full charge, simply press and hold attack button and she will do her core passive. Like that, Eternal Flare. That's it. That's Alpha's core passive nuke. And everything resets. So notice how the digit is zero now. All the lightless points have been converted to extra damage for that Eternal Flare. So every point is 1% damage. So you want to have a really high percentage to do your Eternal Flare. High points. It's also white now. So if you press and hold attack button, nothing will happen. It has to be red. And the only way for it to be red is to do a full charge. So we already have full blade aura. Just press and hold dodge and release. Now it's red. And then I'll press, and press and hold basic attack. There we go. Really simple, right? There are so many ways to get lightless points simply by doing either sword wave or full charge or pinging orbs 
Like that. And then press and hold basic. And it gets emptied and reset again. So you charge again. Ping some orbs. Press and hold. Reset again. So it's pretty straightforward <clears throat> now that you know her rotation. It's just that she can do so many things. That's what made explaining a bit difficult. But now you know the gist. Basically, get it to red. Red number. Get some lightless points to charge it up. And then press and hold attack. Core. And then once you're done, press ultimate for the big nuke. And it'll reset again to a Kodachi. A short sword. So since I don't have any orb pings, if I want to charge it fast, I can do either sword waves to get some energy and orbs. Or... I could just do my dash, full dash, straight away, lots of energy, and it's also red. So when I go into ultimate, since it's already red, I don't have to dash anymore. I could just get some lightless points and then press and hold basic for the core. Just like that. Very simple, right? Full gauge already, just dash, red number, get some lightless points, press and hold basic. And there you go, that's how you play Crimson Weave. So, to sum it up, only blue orb on the first phase. Simply just get enough energy to go into Longsword. And once you're in Longsword, make sure that her number is red. If it's not red, get it to full gauge by doing a dash. One way or another, you have to do a dash to get it to red. And then you're ready. You can do this. Press and hold basic. The only difference now is to get more lightless points so that the slam is more worth it. And then once you're done with this, press ultimate again. There it is. So let me do it really quickly. Dash. Full. Alt. Ping some orbs. Core. Alt again. And so that's it, that's how you play Crimson Weave. Let's take a look at her rank up passives. Okay, S5 and SS rank. I'm gonna assume everyone will aim up to SS rank because Skulls from Pain Cage is free. So S5 rank, casting Moon End Moment at full Blade Aura will also activate QTE that is not on cooldown. Moon End Moment refers to her dash attack, so full dash will activate all QTE. SS rank, Lightless Point Limit increases to 600, which is extremely good for Eternal Flare Slam. 3 ping skills and Moon and Moment gain 50 bonus Lightless Points. Not so copium anymore. Casting Signature Captive Shadow, Thunder Flare, that is the first ultimate where she pulls out her longsword, will instantly trigger Matrix if it's not on cooldown. So SS rank is the bare minimum you really want Crimson Weave to be on for all the quality of life changes. I would highly recommend everyone to get her to at least SS rank and also her matrix on Longsword making 3 pings easier to manage. Moving on to the next rank, SS3. Okay, so for SS3, upon entering battle, the first Moon End Moment cast will restore an additional 20 signature energy. Base damage of Signal Orb skills and Moon and Moment increases by 50%. This is mostly quality of life with your energy management and also more damage with your Signal Orb skills and your dash attack. It's completely optional if you want to just enjoy Alpha's moveset, but this is still good to have if you want to play her slightly more seriously. And for SSS rank, it's full damage. It's a complete damage upgrade. When Alpha is holding the Odachi, making a 3 ping will grant her 15% extra damage bonus. And for her big signature attacks, base damage is increased by 60%. Eternal Flash Thrust attack is also increased by another 50%. And her initial sword wave when she joins battle will give her double damage and also more energy. So you really only go here if you're gonna start tryharding with Alpha. This is when her ult becomes an extremely heavy hitter. As usual, for SSS to SSS+, Plus, it's mostly stats to push you for your Warzone and Pain Cage rating. Otherwise, SSS is already plenty good enough. For F2P and Dolphin, I highly recommend at the very least SS rank and up to SS3 rank. Moving on to the next section, the gear. 
As for her weapon, it's between 5 star and 6 star. I highly recommend her signature 6 star weapon because it gives extra attack by 10% and also extra damage bonus during her long sword. And the best part of it all is that it has 40% extra efficiency for acquiring Lightless. Lightless is the point on her gauge for her Thunder Slam, Eternal Flare attack, and for the Resonance is Deadline Timing, Glorious Afterglow, and Matrix Lightning. For her memory, the general set would be 4 Diesel and 2 Cotty, but there are two different sets for her resonances depending on the rank of your alpha. If your alpha is SS3 and below, the top resonance would be basic attack level plus 1, and the bottom resonance would be attack plus 15. If your alpha is SSS and above, it's gonna be the same, basic attack level plus 1, and signature move. The only reason for this is because SSS rank has really huge signature move damage, and that's what you'll be relying on most of the time. Lastly, her cup. Mortar Bolt is really, really good. It has a pull effect, and for the second skill, let me just show you what it does. So I have the cup equipped with me. I'm gonna use ultimate here to go into Odachi. And activate the cup. There we go. Now I'm gonna use my dash. Look at that. I can combo my core into this. And it does really huge damage. Also pulls on enemies. Another reason why you want to get the cup is because that this skill here improves her eternal flare damage by double of the base damage. So I highly recommend getting it. If you had to choose between the signature weapon and the cup, in that case I recommend getting the cup first since it has a limited time 100% rate up. Meanwhile weapon is always 80%. Now finally, as for the team, this is the general setup you will use with Crimson Weave. The middle spot where Empyrea is, it can be substituted with any other support. It could be Lux or it could be any other amplifier. For Vera, you would like to put Lingya on her, specifically for this skill, which gives an extra blue orb to the next switched in member. So you will start with Vera and then you will switch to Alpha and you will use her all the way. It'll be like uh, going to first alt, core passive, then the big alt, then rinse and repeat, full charge, go into alt, core passive, big alt, all the way. That's pretty much the gist of this team. You, you won't ever use the other two, they'll be just QTE support. And for their memory, Viera would be the same. Uh, 4 signature, 2 Da Vinci. But for now, her bottom resonance will now change to class skill. It was core before, now she will change the support, it'll be class skill, so if you can afford it, change it to class skill. For the middle support, if it's a uh, Imperia, and if it's an Amplifier, it's gonna be class skill as well. For Alpha, we've already gone through that, it's the 4 Signature and 2 Cotty. Either plus 15 attack for SS3 and below, or Signature for SSS and above. And that's it. So we've come to the end of the Crimson Weave play guide and I hope it has given you enough insights on how she's played. This video is slightly scuffed because I was involved in an unfortunate project deletion accident so I had to make everything from scratch again. So please forgive me. Once again, consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.